Hello wizards, witches, and everyone in between. My name is Emma and today I will be doing my May wrap up. Alright, so I read 10 books in May. So the first book I read in the month of May was Sadie by Courtney Summers and I gave this five stars. It was so good. So Sadie is the story about a 19 year old girl named Sadie who runs away from her home and her town after the murder of her sister. And so half this book takes place like in Sadie's timeline and then the other half is a podcast where they are documenting the process of finding Sadie and figuring out what's happened to her, where she is, what she's doing, that kind of thing. And let me just say Sadie is one of my favorite characters that I've read in a long time. She is such a badass and I just admire her a lot. I would really like to cosplay her at some point this year. That would be fun. I just need to get my hands on a red zip up because I do not have one. So the next book I read was A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer and I gave this 3.5 I believe. And this is a fairy tale retelling of Beauty and the Beast and this girl Harper, she basically just gets whisked away from her home in DC and she gets transported to this kingdom where's there, where there is this beast and she has to try and break the curse or he wants her to try and break the curse just in, you know, every Beauty and the Beast retelling. We read this for my book club. I'm in the Page Dwellers. I enjoyed it. It felt a little long. The book is almost 500 pages. I definitely think it could have been like 350. It was it was dual perspective and so a lot of the chapters I just got annoyed with either Harper or Wren. Wren's the beast. Like just I just got annoyed with them. That's the issue of dual perspective as I feel like you always prefer one perspective over the other. It was kind of predictable you know, because it is, a, it is a retelling and that's a weird thing to say because I do really love like the Lunar Chronicles are all retellings, especially Cinder is like a pretty straightforward one, but I think it was just that it was different enough and I think this one wasn't different enough that it was just kind of predictable and yeah, it was good, but it definitely wasn't like it wasn't amazing for me. Next, I read Spectacle Volume 1 by Megan Rose Gedris, and I gave this three stars. Initially, I really liked it. It's about, uh, it takes place like at a carnival, and it's about these performers there, and one of them, her sister, gets murdered, and she is trying to help her sister's ghost figure out who murdered her. And there's some funny parts, because like, she can see her sister's ghost, but no one else can. And it was cool. There were a couple characters I really, really liked, like side characters, and I just wish that they were more prominent and maybe they are in the second volume, but towards the end, it just kind of fell flat for me. And I don't know if I'm gonna continue on with it. Next, I read Becoming by Michelle Obama. I listened to this on Scribd, but I gave this five stars. It was so good. I already love Michelle Obama, but to hear her narrate it was amazing. I would definitely recommend listening to this over reading it just because I feel like part of its appeal is like hearing her tell you about her life. And it sounds like you're just like having a really long 19 hour chat about her life. And she's just so inspirational and the things that she's done and just her outlook on life and stuff. I really, really enjoyed it. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, I would definitely recommend it. Next, I read Do Not Become Alarmed by Maylee Malloy and I gave this 2.5 out of 5 stars. I had really high hopes for this book. Cue the Panic at the Disco song, but it just sounded really cool. It's about this family who goes on vacation to Central America and they're like on a cruise and so that when they go like onto the their like planned land excursions they some of their kids go missing and I thought it was gonna be like a fast-paced thriller thing of like where are their kids and what's happening and all that kind of stuff and that sounded like something that I would like but it 
it was just a lot different than I thought. The, the, the kids who went missing have their own chapters. So as readers, we know what happened to them, like way, 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 way before their parents do. Like we never don't know what happened to them. So I feel like it took all the suspense out of it. And so we're just waiting and waiting for their, them to like get reunited. The other thing I had an issue with was the fact that the author read this. I listened to this as well on Scribd and she did a very cringy Central American accent because she was speaking as local people from Central America speaking in English to the people who traveled there on vacation. So her accent was so cringy. I don't know who told her that it was a good idea for her to record her own audiobook, but it was not. It was not, not there for me, sis. Next, I read Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. I gave this three stars. I buddy read this with Stephanie from Neffa Entertainment, and it's always a good time buddy reading with her. But this book just kind of fell flat for me. I had really high expectations because I know so many people love this so much. In the whole book, all like almost 350 pages of this, what happens could be summed up in two sentences. And that just bugged me. The, the two main characters were good. I liked them, but I got frustrated with both of them at time. And then towards the end, like you have the whole like discover the secrets of the universe thing. This isn't a spoiler, but like everyone has a secret that they need to like get out. And this came together all in like the last 20 pages. So it kind of beats you over the head with the whole secrets of the universe. Every character has their own secret. And you know, what are they gonna do with it? And it just really like, I was like, I get it. I get it. And also you didn't have to put all of these people discovering all of their secrets of the universe all within like 20 pages of each other at the very very end. Overall, I did like it. There were there were good parts, but it definitely wasn't like as amazing to me as a bunch of people like as it is for a bunch of other people. Next, I read Nightwoods by Charles Fraser. Uh Charles Fraser's most commonly known, I think, for writing Cold Mountain. This book follows a lady named Luce whose sister is murdered and so she takes care of her sister's kids. And she was like, she never really wanted kids. She's not a mother type. And so she's dealing with how to do that. The kids won't talk. So she's, you know, they're dealing with their own kind of thing. They're very young. Then it becomes kind of like a thriller thing of like, who killed her sister? And you know, there's a cop character, there's Luce, there's the kids, and then there's the person who killed her sister. And so it kind of all comes down to like this fast paced thr thriller thing towards the end, which was really, really cool. This was set in the 1960s in a super tiny town in North Carolina. And I don't know why, but like those types of settings are like one of my favorite settings. I don't know why, but I just, I really like that. So it was a good time. I gave it four stars. It wasn't like, you know, the best thing I've ever read, but it was, very very enjoyable and just it was really quick read it's very small and man it just gets straight to the point and it's really good next i read again but better by christine riccio this is obviously not the copy that i infamously wash in my washing machine uh i will insert a photo of that in case you missed that on twitter that was a time I had to rewash all my clothes like 5,000 times to get bits of paper out of them. But yeah, I gave this 3.5 out of 5 stars. I was going to give this its own review video, but I just figured so many people have reviewed it already. But I will try and be concise with what I have to say about it. So this follows the story of a girl named Shane who decides to study abroad and kind of her adventures there and what she's learned. and it's divided up between two time periods. And so like the first half of the book is 2011. And then the second half of the book is present day. And the 2011 half, I thought this was going to be a five star read for me. I was in love with it so much. I was laughing out loud. 
didn't do it with this copy, but with my old copy, I was annotating it. I was so, so into it. And then it got to the time jump and then it got to the plot twist and it had like some magical elements in there and I was just not feeling that. A lot of people were really annoyed at the pop culture references from the, be from the beginning. I wasn't annoyed with them from the beginning, but by the end of the book, I was very annoyed with how many pop culture references were in here. But overall, I still really enjoyed it. I would read it again for sure. It's written for a specific type of person. And if you're not that type of person, then I don't think you could really relate to this. But there's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it not being like relating to a bunch of people. But I do think that's why there's so much like people either really like it or they don't at all. And I really liked that she was older, that she was 20, I believe. We don't get a lot of that. And that's one of the things that Christine had said was she wanted to write a book about someone in college because it's true. We don't get that a lot at all. And that was really, really nice. And so I, I related a lot to Shane and that's a big reason why I loved it so much, despite some like little annoyances in there. Next, I read The Witch Doesn't Burn in This One by Amanda Lovelace. This is the first poetry collection that I have ever read by her and I loved it. I gave it five stars. It was just, it was a really good feminist time. Very inspirational, made me feel like I can go out and do anything. Down with the patriarchy, smash the glass ceiling, like it was awesome and I really, really enjoyed it. I really wanna pick up her other ones now. Last but not least, I listened to Evil Eye by Madhuri Shikar. I'm so sorry, I probably butchered that. But it was an Audible original, so there is no physical copy of it. It looks like this, if you can see that sort of. Um, it has a bunch of eyeballs on it and it was really cool. I've never listened to something that's like only in audio form before. Like it was just made for Audible and it was free and it was pretty good. It was entertaining. I gave it three stars just because I got annoyed a little bit with some of the voice actors, but that's kind of like my problem and not something to do with the plot. But I think it was two and a half hours long and it was about this girl whose parents live in India, but she lives in the US and they are very traditional and they want to set her up with somebody and she keeps rejecting it. And there's just a lot of pressure on her from her mom, especially to find a nice Indian guy, get married and have lots of kids. And our main character doesn't want to do that. And she ends up finding this guy who happens to be Indian um, and she's in love with him and she expects that her family, especially her mom, obviously, will be thrilled for her. But the more that her mom learns about this guy and the more that she kind of does some creepy like investigating on him, there's something bad about him. Kind of like a supernatural thing, I guess. I don't know how you would describe like what the word for like the evil eye and those kind of things are, like a spiritual thing. She just has this feeling that something bad that this that this guy's bad but in all senses he seems amazing and um the girl's dad doesn't see anything wrong with him and as a listener we don't see anything wrong with him t until towards the end he starts getting kind of weird and you can hear it in his voice the voice actor which is really cool and towards the end just like shit goes down the last like 30 minutes of this were so suspenseful. It was, it was cool. But uh, the start, it just started off kind of slow and I don't know, it was really interesting though. All right, those are the books that I read in the month of May. Let me know down below if you have read any of these and I will talk to you guys later. Mm -hmm.